Good afternoon and thank you for the invitation. I will uh, give a brief response and prepare it like Peter. And uh, I think that um, I will answer to James' notion of a decentered West and magical realism understood as juxtaposition of different times and a historicization of those junctures as such. That's actually what, uh, what we are doing in our museums and what I would like to reflect on uh, in my comments, in which I take the, uh, the Tropen Museum as a point of departure. This room in Sana is empty. Probably the people left the country or maybe they are internally displaced persons because there's a war going on in Yemen and maybe they have been trying to escape that war. And Sana'a is not the only place in the world where the only heritage site even in the world that is under attack. And it is very striking that the Tropen Museum addresses this issue by exhibiting an empty room. Deserted as well, and on the verge of disappearance, is the famous Kashba. So what's going on behind the scene? Where are the people? And what is the Tropen Museum saying? and trying to tell the visitors behind their facades of Orientalism. Let's have a look behind those facades and visit the famous city of Aleppo, which is on display in the Tropen Museum as a prototypical Middle Eastern or maybe Ottoman multicultural city. So this is the Ottoman Aleppo city uh, on display in the uh, Tropen Museum. Uh, it is a fast forward 24 hours video of two minutes. We do not say people, uh, see people. Um, and this city as well is on the World Heritage List, but that doesn't prevent it from being victim to the current war in Syria, which is a geopolitical conflict framed as a civil war. Uh, the Netherlands also have their F-16s flying there. The diorama is a beautiful piece of exhibition technique. Uh, it's designed and built by Franz Stelling and Erik Teffer. And I really do remember them working at it for several months. Maybe it was more than a year, uh, somewhere in the early 1990s. It's an intricate, intricate play of light, mirror images, and sound. And the visitor probably doesn't know what they actually see. What they see is not real. It's only a reflection of light.
even the real objects that are on display here <laughs> are not being seen as real objects, but they are seen as reflections of those objects. The whole di diorama in itself is a Fata Morgana, and it has been designed uh, as such. It's almost surreal, I would say. We see no object, no people, just a reflection, and that is what we see. It's surreal as a technique, but it's also surreal in my experience because of its complete disengagement with the present. This picture I've shown last year as well here in the, in the discussion, uh, students working on the notion of world heritage sites and the UNESCO mission statement that we all know by heart that uh, if war begins in the mind of men, it's in the mind of men that we have to uh, fight it and establish the conditions for peace. And uh, I think that in thinking about world heritage sites, it's very important that we think about it in a consolidation manner. What happens here affects there. It's not just that we enjoy cultural heritage here, uh, sorry, it's war there, and we put it uh, on the list in danger. And especially museums, I think, have a responsibility in it, but I'm not going to discuss that now more. For me, museum realisms imply an active engagement with the political dimensions of the heritage of the people that have been collected all over the time. And that's the type of historicization which James very actively connects to realism. Uh, that's the type of historicization that I think uh, is um, uh, important. It is about people. There are still people in the Tropen Museum on display. Uh, this is Kozro Hazanzadeh's uh, mother in the series of terrorists. It's on display. Do we really ask the visitors to think about why he made it, why, uh, why he showed it as such? Does it yeah, realize some type of engagement with what's going on in the real world? And then I use real world as something where bombs are flying and where people are being labeled again and again and again in contradiction uh, towards each other. So this brings me to another notion. We had the surrealism which you can clearly find in the diorama. Um, we have the historical realisms of contemporary society. Uh, and we also have this whole notion of hyper-reality, as it has been um, yeah, used in Chakrabarti's uh, discussion about uh, provincializing Europe. And I think that this whole notion of hyper-reality is at stake, that's what I see happening. Uh, 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 forgetting that we need a critical engagement, uh, engagement with this notion of hyper-reality of Europe in our own museums is at stake in the uh, current discussions. Uh, the mirror Im image of Europe was reflected in representations of others, as you can see here in the famous uh, ethnographic tradition, and these are uh, from the Tropen Museum collections. And um, this type of representations of others have deeply <coughs> inflected our notion of realism. Uh, uh, the Tropen Museum has uh, thought about answering that in a museological way, as in the case of the diorama, using the same techniques and putting these uh, people in another way uh, on display. Uh, and I know that there's a lot of discussion about this type of realism uh, based in a realism of a, of a museum practice. And I think it's very useful to, to further uh, discuss this. Um, for me, what is very important in this discussion is that we always have to be aware what happens outside of the ethnographic museum. So for me, that's the real thing, the real world, and the tendency that I see uh, that museums discuss uh, 
related to what happens here, related to a dialogue in our society, etc., etc., it's fine, but it also could be that it is a, a kind of um, uh, mirror of the discussion that we have about the borders of our countries. We are discussing what's happening here. People can come here and we discuss with them, fine, that's, the, that's, that's our society and we are open and we will change and whatever uh, is going on. I think that we really need a critical engagement with what's going on somewhere else in the world and not just try to get everything in order in our own society. <laughs>